So, um, yeah, thanks. I am very happy to be here. I, I do speak at a lot of the API Days conferences, and uh, when they said, would you like to come to Singapore, they didn't have to ask twice. So, uh, so I'm happy to be here. I have about 25 minutes, maybe more, because we don't have another speaker, uh, <laughs> to, to share with you uh, some information today. Um, I really didn't fly halfway around the world to spend 25 minutes with you, so I, I really encourage you to come up to me afterward and talk about a variety of topics. I'm going to share one topic with you this morning, uh, but I cover a lot of things for IBM. So as, as mentioned, I'm the digital transformation business strategist. What does that mean? It means uh, I get to go out and talk to businesses about digital transformation, about what they can do uh, to uh, become a digital, digital business. And really, the, I just recently changed my title to that. I get to make up my own names for things. Um, I was the API business strategist uh, for the last several years. And, and so when you try to talk to the business about APIs, that's a challenge. When you try to talk to the business about digital transformation, it's less of a challenge, right? So, so the main purpose in title transformation was to allow me to take a step into the business world and get the business excited about what we can do with APIs to enable a digital transformation. So um, I do write a lot when I'm not traveling uh, and speaking uh, to you all individually or at conferences. I write a lot, and at the end of the presentation, I'm going to share with you links to everything I've written for the last several years. Uh, and that will kind of be the list of topics that I'd encourage you to come up and chat with me about uh, after the session for the next couple of days. So in, in talking with John about what I might present here, uh, I, I thought uh, I haven't covered the maturity model in a while, and uh, it might be a good thing to share with you our thinking on the API economy maturity. Um, so, so that's today's topic. Um, I thought I'd start off with this one. Uh, this slide. This is a, a slide that I use with a lot of businesses when I go in to talk to them individually. Um, the first question I ask every business is, why are you here? Why are you talking to me? Why are you doing APIs? And, and it's amazing how many businesses cannot answer that question. Uh, the, the, they you know, hear this thing about APIs. They know they have to get going with something. They don't know what they're planning to do. They don't know why they're planning to do it. Uh, and, of course, the uh, Lewis Carroll quotes uh, apply. If you don't know why you're doing something, then anything will, will do, right? So, so the first question that a business needs to answer is, why are you doing this? And then I thought about, in the context of maturity model, a fair question back to me would be, okay, you know, I have to figure out why I'm doing this, but can you tell me where this is going? You know, where, where, where are people today? Where is it going? I don't want to do what people have already done. I want to do where things are going to be, right? So you, Mr. Strategist, tell me where are things going, right? So, so I started to think about that, and where do I stand today, and where is it going in the future, and how do I move forward? And I, I, I thought about uh, this famous quote from uh, Wayne Gretzky. Now, talking about an ice hockey player here in Singapore, I don't know if this translates at all, right? But, but, uh, but Wayne Gretzky is probably the best ice hockey player that's ever existed. And he said, a good hockey player plays where the puck is, and a great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. Right? So where is the puck going to be? Where is the API economy going? And that's, that's the topic today. So uh, my management asked me to uh, work on a maturity model, and I, I didn't do this alone. Uh, this is a, a, a group effort by a lot of very smart people in IBM who... Uh, I was able to encourage to work with me. Um, and, and we started to work on a maturity model. And before I even show you the maturity model, I wanted to show you this picture, because a lot of people think this is maturity, right? Most businesses that I talk to with APIs start by having internal APIs for their own developers to do things like mobile projects and things like that. Um, and, and then they move forward to a partnering model, maybe with partners they're already working with. Um, then maybe to partner on boarding, and then maybe they finally go out to public APIs. So many people think this is maturity, right? That uh, this is the stage that people move through uh, to become more mature in the marketplace. What do you think? <laughs> I think I'm, I'm implying the answer, right? So, uh, so this is not maturity. Um, this this is, is a, a common pattern, but I just spoke to a business here in Singapore on Monday, um, that is a partnering model business. They, they partner on board. 
And every partner that they onboard is a multi-week, multi-month experience to onboard the partner to the interfaces that they make available to them. That's not a mature process, right? A mature process would have this in an automated fashion that moves this along and is part of the way they do business. So I started with a frequently asked question, probably the most frequently asked question. Um, this is, we looked at um, maturity as not being doing a particular activity, but how ingrained is that activity into the way your business operates, right? If, this, if doing APIs as a business is the way you operate, you're more mature. If you're doing a one-off, I created an API and I made it available to somebody, you're in the early stages, okay? And, and that's fine. It's not a bad thing to be in the early stages. You're getting started and, and, and things are happening. But, but how can I then move forward, right? So what I'm going to share with you is the model that we created. I'm not going to share the whole model because it's crazy big. Um, but I'm going to take you through some of our thinking in, in this maturity model and how we created it. So we put ourselves together and we said, okay, first thing we need to do is come up with levels of maturity. What does it mean to, you know, well, let's just came up, come up with names. Right? We have to name these things. Uh, so what names can we give to the different levels of maturity? So these are our um, non-marketing names. Uh, these are the names that myself and the other guys came up with uh, for, for this. So ad hoc, kind of just doing one-off kind of things. Um, Provider-driven, which tends to be the first phase. We start to look at the systems we have inside the company and say, what APIs can I create from these? Um, then the next phase is consumer-driven. And I was really happy so far. Every single presenter that's been in this room uh, that's spoken has talked not only about um, not having provider-oriented views, but not even almost consumer-oriented views, but what the consumer's consumer is going to do with it. And really, that's the view you need to take in this space. So if you're moving in that direction, that's great. Fourth is business innovation-driven, and fifth is market-driven. Um, now, the marketing people got hold of this and said, uh, we don't like any of these titles. Uh, and so they renamed them to much longer names. Uh, learning using an unstructured approach was considered much more politically correct than ad hoc. Uh, um, discovering and experimenting to gain market understanding was the next one. Um, implementing targeted market solutions. Expanding to full digital market solutions and innovating with predictive transformation. So the rest of the slides, you're going to see these titles. Uh, I don't find these too meaningful, but, uh, but I like the original ones. So, so I put those in there just so I can remember what they are. Um, all right, so, so having now defined at least titles for the names of the different levels that you could get to, uh, we have to define what those mean. And so we did this across both business and techn technology. Now, I'm the business strategist. I led the business side of this. Uh, we had other people who were more technical than I am lead the, the technical side, right? So uh, within the two perspectives, we identified uh, six different dimensions that we wanted to evaluate for a business. Now, let me step back and say, the way this is going to play out is um, we don't define um, technologies or um, specific things that you do, but a behavior, right? So it's all about the behavior of the way you are at a particular maturity level. So within these six different um, dimensions, we then identified m several factors for every one of these uh, dimensions that we would evaluate a business on to determine their maturity level. Now, there's also not one answer to how mature you are, right? You might be less mature in one aspect and more mature in another aspect, and that's fine as well, right? So, so you might fit into multiple different places. So this is kind of the context that we built ourselves as a structure of um, how to evaluate maturity. Uh, by the way, I'm also looking for feedback on this. Uh, I, I'm curious to see, you know, we have a lot of smart people here in the room. How, do you think this is right? Did I screw it all up? Is, is it, you know, totally wrong? You think the internal partner, external is the right way to go? Um, you know, give me feedback on, on what you think of this model as well. So, to show you the full model will take way too long, uh, and I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to focus in on particular parts 
Now, I know this is a, an eye chart. <laughs> uh, we're going to give you all these slides. They've you know, already been given to the conference, so you can get all of these. Uh, so that's not a problem. But the way to read this is this is the business approach one, right? Just this one box right there, this, this, this one, OK? And these four uh, factors are, are in there. So you'll see the four factors along the side here, um, the five levels of maturity along the top. Um, there's a summary line, which is going to be important in a second. Uh, there's a set of leading questions, which were kind of the way we would think to ourselves about what questions would we ask to determine what level of maturity you are. And then we filled in the boxes. Um, and so thinking about a particular level of maturity for these particular factors, what would the maturity be? Okay, and so this was the approach we took, and there's an uh, underlined piece in there, which was kind of the title of the box, um, but uh, then some text that described the maturity level below that. I don't, can you all read this? I know it's kind of fuzzy, and okay, you can't read it. Um, so, so I'll just hit on a couple of them. Um, the first level kind of things, you'll see a context of project-oriented and manual, right? So it, it says here at the summary level, limited or no business focused digital strategy. It basically, you're doing ad hoc <laughs> type things, right? Which was the name that we had for, the, for this. Uh, and then as you move forward, it becomes more um, IT-centric type things that you're doing here. You're starting to do some things uh, you know, to focus on time to market. Then the next thing is to get new customers, then to drive new channels, and finally expanding the ecosystem. And, and this goes across uh, in that way. So, um, so I, I'll put up something that maybe is a little more readable. Um, the summary line that we created right on the top here is what we then started to publish externally as the definition of the model, right? So on the next slide and the one after that, you'll see um, the summaries of what the maturity means for each one of these different levels, right? So, and you'll see that it moves from the kind of one-off type ad hoc thing into an IT-driven um, set of scenarios. Then it moves into uh, a combination of business and IT uh, together. And then it moves into a business-driven uh, kind of a, a scenario. And then finally into an ecosystem-driven and then a more dynamic e ecosystem. Um, in my mind, as I was putting this together with the other folks, I was thinking about the web because I'm an old person, uh, you know, I started in 1981, and so I lived through all the web stuff. Uh, and so I saw the web in the early days being driven by IT, right? The IT people decided to put up a website for a company, and they decided what was on it. And at that time, for those of you who might be close to my age, you, you would see a website that would be up there that say, hi, we're company A, call us at this phone number, or we're located in these locations, right? You know, but there was no transactions, there was nothing like that. Um, and, and then after a little bit of time, the business started to get involved and say, well, you know, maybe we can do something here. And, uh, and so business working with IT, but IT was very cautious from a security perspective and, you know, and not wanting to give away the, the, the crown jewels and have be disintermediated and channel conflict and all these kinds of things were, were the big issues of the internet in the early days. But that got past that and nowadays everybody's doing tremendous amounts of business on the internet and the internet is all business driven. IT is reacting to what the business wants to do on the web, right? We're going to go through the same pattern with APIs. So we have started down the path of IT-driven APIs. Most of you are probably from IT. Hopefully, we've got some business people here in the room. Um, we're going to move to a, a business partnership kind of a model. And then we're going to move to the businesses driving this model, right? So that's the way we see this playing out. The second page, just to show you, is the more technical side of things. Um, so across architecture, information and content, process and methods and infrastructure. Um, and so that's that. And so that's, that's really kind of the context of the model that I wanted to share with you. Uh, I then wanted to share with you a couple of questions because I get these all the time. Uh, so the first question I got was about the internal partner and external thing. Um, and, and the second uh, question that I got, especially from my management, is how come our product is not listed in that uh, thing, right? So, so, uh, so, you know, we have a product in IBM that does API management, and I didn't see a single thing about the product in that maturity model there, so you've clearly gotten this wrong. Uh, and, and so, 
Um, so the answer to that one is um, the product is actually underscoring the model, not just ours, but you know, API management is as a technique to start to manage your APIs and make them available to the different audiences is a way that you move from one maturity level to another, just along with the processes that you have and things like uh, you know, monetization and some of the other topics that, that come through are the ways that you move forward in the model. Right? So the point of the model is not to identify that you install IBM API Connect here and then you'll be here, but rather that in order to get from this level of maturity to where I want to be at a level of maturity, there are a set of actions that I need to take and installing an API management solution is part of that as well as many other things that you'll, you'll do. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, how do hackathons relate to the model? Um, so I'm a big fan of hackathons. I think hackathons are, are great. Uh, it, it, uh, I've seen companies do this uh, with internal people. That's fine, but the best hackathons are external, right? So if you can get an external audience and start to use your APIs, you'll find out a lot about um, your APIs and, and how useful they are and what the actual audience wants from your APIs, right? So I think it's a great technique. And just like the answer to the previous question, the answer to this is it's part of the way that you move forward in your maturity. And I've identified a couple of specific areas in the model where it, where it plays out. So, um, so that's uh, hackathons. Uh, the next question is an, always a fun one. So where is, where is most of everybody today, right? You know, where, you know, where do people sit in this maturity model? Um, and you can guess the answer to that is all over it. Uh, um, so there are, most companies are still in the earlier phases. They are still IT driven uh, start. The better ones, the, the more advanced ones, more mature ones, uh, are moving into that business partnership or even a business led kind of a, kind of a model. Uh, and there are companies that, that cross all of these different things. And some parts may be, like I said, in, in different parts of the model. Um, so what else? Um, so this is the, the kind of summary chart for how I talk about this. Normally when I'm speaking to businesses about uh, API things, uh, I throw one chart in the presentation on, on our thinking of where this is going and, and this is it. Um, and I'll show you a couple of links that can get you to more. But, but this, this is basically the view of the model. So um, I'm going uh, to show you some more stuff in a few seconds. But, before I do that, maybe we'll open it up to any questions that we might have on, on the model itself. Um, so thanks for presenting this smart uh, framework. Uh, definitely the internet giants are showing the way. They are leaders like Amazon uh, implementing this. Uh, big organizations in uh, more traditional industries are struggling to follow that path. But what about the small businesses? who have little or no electronification of their business processes. How many companies still do their accounting or inventory on Excel? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is the gap not too wide for them? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, I get this one a lot, uh, which is, this is great for big enterprises, or APIs maybe in general are great for big enterprises. Does this really apply in, in a small and medium-sized uh, business? Um, I think, this is uh, uh, almost more advantageous to small and medium businesses in many ways. Uh, behind your API, nobody knows how big you are, right? And, 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 and so if your API is providing value to an ecosystem or to a, a partner or whatever, you have the opportunity to grow tremendously. And probably one of the best examples of this in the API space is Twilio. Uh, Twilio is a messaging API, right? They came, they're a very small company when they started. Uh, they came out with this idea of, of anybody who wants to SMS a message to somebody can use their API. And so rather than build your own thing, everybody just used the Twilio API. And they're now, uh, uh, their IPO went for like many billions of dollars, right? So, so they grew to a tremendous company. So sure, from a maturity level perspective, from the model perspective, are you going to have all these kind of internal workings? I think, it, you know, maybe not. Um, you don't have the legacy uh, that some of the bigger businesses will have in trying to pull this all together. In some cases you do, um, but, uh, but small and medium businesses can be more agile in many ways than the larger business in trying to get around this kind of a, an issue. And I, I think you do have uh, an equal chance. 
One of the blogs I'll show you in just a few minutes is about small and medium businesses and, and how they can take advantage of the API economy. So I'm not sure if they had that answered, but uh, we can certainly chat further. So uh, from a digital transformation standpoint, I mean, can you digitally transform without investing in an API economy? <laughs> Well, as the API person, I would say no, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it, would, it would certainly be tougher. So let, I've done a lot of thinking about digital transformation lately, and, and that's been, with a new change in my title to that kind of thing, I'm starting to think about what does it mean to be a digital business? What does it mean to do a digital transformation? And if you Google digital transformation or digital business, you'll get a hundred or a thousand different definitions of, of what that is. Um, so you kind of have to figure out what it means for you to be a digital business. Many of the definitions talk about the technologies that you bring to bear to become a digital business. Personally, I'm not as interested in that as uh, what it means to be a digital business from what's different than what we did before. And what's different in my mind, in the definition that I like, is the consumer orientation. So my company, IBM, makes products. We make hardware products, software products. We have offerings in, in the services. All your companies make products. Our history has been that when we come to market, we tell you about our product, right? And it's our product view of what you need. And the digital transformation, digital business, is taking the opposite side of this. It's what some of the other speakers spoke about this morning. It's that consumer orientation. It's the, the OCBC thing. I don't want a loan. I want to buy a house, right? And, and buying a house is not just getting a loan, it's you know, buying the house, it's dealing with the real estate, it's finding the new school for my children, it's all these things that go into that. And, and that digital business success is going to be about building the ecosystem around what the customer is trying to do and my part in that ecosystem and building that solution together. Now, I think the easiest way to build that is through APIs. You can do it in the one-off ad hoc mechanisms that have gone before, but you're going to be less successful because you're not going to be able to penetrate the market as, as easily as if you do it with APIs, right? So I think you don't have to use APIs, but I think your challenge is going to be much greater if you didn't use APIs to do that. I'm going to slide forward, uh, uh, and uh, is the other speaker here? Do I need to? She is. Okay. So, so, uh, so let me leave you with a few links. This is our developer works page for our product. Everything I publish, everything that all the other uh, colleagues of mine publish is typically linked off of this page. So uh, if you just know developer.ibm.com slash API Connect, and you go up to the blog link, you'll be able to find pretty much everything that, that uh, I'm going to show you next. Um, the next couple of pages are, uh, are uh, three pages of links of things that I provide to you as resources for you to use uh, for your own benefit uh, as you like them or if you're having trouble sleeping at night. Um, so uh, the, the top one on the left is basically everything I've written. Uh, so you can link, link from that to everything else. Uh, and then there's a category here which are just kind of some basic information, some introductory things often used uh, for IT to explain to the business why they should care about these kinds of things. Um, then there's a set on digital business and digital transformation. Um, the newest one that I wrote this weekend uh, is this last one, creating a digital ecosystem, past, present, and future. Um, when you get the content, that one link may not be in there uh, because I submitted it already before that, but you'll be able to get to it from the first link on, on the top there. Um, the next page has uh, business and value on the one side. Um, so again, ROI type things, monetization, those kinds of topics. And then this is what I spend a lot of my time talking to businesses about. How do I create a strategy? Um, so everything from the high level top one there that then points to a lot of the others about strategy and governance and best practices and bad practices and uh, all the things that, that take you through that. So I, again, these are topics that I would love to be chatting with you about this week, not just the maturity model. Last page, um, more technical stuff. So architecture, a little bit about our product, um, some of the thinking I've had on innovation, uh, microservices, positioning with services and APIs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then use cases. Uh, so industry use cases um, for every industry that I could think of. So, um, so that's 
all your sources, uh, and I hope that you uh, get some value out of those. There was a small and medium business in there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I can find it. Um, so, so that's what I'm uh, here to share with you this week. Uh, please see me. Um, is Ori in the room? He's not. Uh, Ori uh, was gonna, uh, one of the conference organizers. Uh, IBM has added something to the app that you've got for the conference to ask you to fill in a couple of questions on the app. And if you do, you can stop by the IBM booth and they've got a special gift for you. Okay, so I don't remember how you get to it, but uh, Ori was going to tell you that. Uh, I'm sure you're smart people and you can navigate. So, <laughs> uh, so that's it. Unless there's any other questions, I'm, I'm, I'm done. All right, thanks, Alan. Are there any other questions? I did have one thing for okay, you. Okay, sure. So you've written, obviously, a lot. Yeah. Um, kind of apropos to the question from the gentleman over there. If I'm getting started, as in I'm in the ad hoc stage yeah. or so forth, yeah. where would I go? Yeah. Because this is scary. So I start with the question why, right? The, the question why are you doing this is, to me, the most important question. So in the strategy column, you know, we cover those kinds of things. But I, in my travels, have linked it, locked in on this right here. Four business drivers and seven use case categories, right? And this is what I'm seeing that most businesses why they want to do this and what kinds of things do they do, right? So starting with that one uh, to figure out, you know, where might you care to do things about APIs uh, to me is, is the most important thing. If you just want to educate yourself on what is this, you know, not really, you know, getting to that point, then some of these earlier ones, right? What's an API? What's the API economy? What's API management? Hey, I already have APIs. Why do I need this thing? You know, those kinds of questions that we get asked, the basics are, are all on this page right here. Yep. Cool. Thanks very much. Oh, one more question. Sorry. Oh, sure. Uh, the question is, uh, you are talking about customer view on APIs. At the same time, in a couple of slides, you are talking, think about your organization, what you, what, where you are and what you provide. Uh, the question is, when I was talking about APIs, not from our organization, which we provide, but from customer, does it mean there should be some API standards to mm. be implemented by different organizations? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us anything Sure, about sure. That? So that's a great question. Uh, the, the, the best APIs you can create are going to be consumer-oriented APIs. And I have a scenario, which I'm not going to have the time to go through here, to, to, to give you a great example of that. But I really think the heart of your question comes down to the industry standards, standards for APIs. That is so important for the success of this. And that latest blog that I just wrote on digital ecosystem, past, present, and future, talks to how this is going to move forward. So um, historically, what businesses have done uh, is that manual ad hoc onboarding kind of a thing. Where we are today is uh, if I want to become a partner with another business, we establish a business relationship with each other uh, for trust and, and for what our economic re uh, relationship is going to be. And then I can give you access to the developer portal and you can consume it. But that's not ge generating an ecosystem. In order to generate a really successful ecosystem that's going to really explode this, there, I talk about two things that are needed. This is the future piece, right? We need industry standards. Uh, in banking, it's happening in some parts of the world. Things like PSD2, open banking, and, and some of it's starting to happen here. Um, in other industries, in other geographies, things are happening to start to, to, to do that. So industry standards are going to let multiple businesses work together. Um, businesses are not going to differentiate their offerings based on how good their API is. It's going to be based on how good your capabilities and your value that you provide are behind the API. So having a standard API is good. The second thing that's needed is an ecosystem platform, uh, trust. I, I can't just take any API that's out there as a business and say I'm going to use it if I don't know that this is not somebody that's going to steal the information and take my money and do bad things with it. So there needs to be some kind of a, an automated way to onboard businesses from a trust perspective to enable this to really be more dynamic in the future so that we can have that fifth level of maturity where we get uh, dynamic onboarding not only at a technical level for the API, which the uh, standards would provide, 
but also from a business level that we could establish a business relationship without that getting to know you kind, kind of thought. So, so that's where I, I, I think this is going, but I think industry standards are absolutely key to the success of this. And I think it's a matter of time until we get there. And, and if I may add. Sure. If you, mind, uh, if you come in tomorrow, there's probably going to be a, a whole heap of discussions around open banking. And you can't do open banking without you know, really, really technical standards, right? And, and if you look at the, the interface diagrams and such, I'm sure Dilip could talk about that in much more detail, but, you know, um, it is very complicated, but it is very comprehensive as well as to how and, you interact yeah. with the And in this industry column here, there are some, uh, there's a thing on industry standards and regulatory requirements here, and there's also some banking ones up here on PSD2 and a Q&A that I did with the head of technology at Open Banking. So. So in banking in particular, this is uh, definitely advancing. Fantastic. Yep. Thank you, Alan. Um, and we can talk further. Yeah. yeah.